Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and today the hotly anticipated 2.0 update for Cyberpunk 2077 has dropped. As cool as that may be from a gaming perspective, we do have a slightly different reason to be taking a look at the game today, and that's because with this new update, DLSS 3.5 has also landed in Cyberpunk. In this video then, we are going to be doing a whole heap of image quality comparisons to see exactly what difference this new technology makes and how it affects performance. Let's dive in. EK Nucleus AIO, your first step towards efficient cooling. To start this video off then with a quick refresher, DLSS 3.5 was announced back at Gamescom 2023 and as a new feature to the DLSS family, that being ray reconstruction. Now, unlike DLSS super resolution or frame generation, the goal here is not to boost your frame rate by either lowering the internal resolution or adding in completely new frames. Rather, the goal behind ray reconstruction is to significantly boost image quality with ray tracing enabled, and it does this by replacing the denoiser stage of the render pipeline. If you didn't know, all ray trace games currently utilize one form of denoising or another, but Nvidia is very keen to point out the current limitations. Temporal accumulation denoisers can introduce ghosting, while spatial interpolation denoisers can reduce detail. In essence, current so-called hand-tuned denoisers do reduce ray traced image quality in one form or another. Not so with ray reconstruction, or at least that's the idea. By replacing the hand-tuned denoisers with an AI network that has apparently been trained on five times as much data as DLSS 3, Nvidia is claiming massively improved image quality as ray reconstruction can recognize different RT effects and intelligently pull out the key details that might have otherwise been lost. So really, it is all about image quality. Now, there might be some change to performance, which we will get to later on, but this is not meant to be a frame rate boosting technology. It is also supported on all RTX GPUs, including the 20 series and 30 series, though as a reminder, frame generation is only limited to 40 series GPUs. In this video then, I'm going to be taking a close look at the image quality of ray reconstruction in Cyberpunk 2077. Before I do dive into those comparisons though, there are just a few other points that you need to know which will help give this testing some context. Firstly, ray reconstruction is only available when using the RT overdrive mode, which is a fully path traced renderer. This is exceptionally demanding on the GPU and I think really does limit the amount of users who can realistically enable ray reconstruction. It is technically supported on all RTX GPUs, but most of the 20 series and lower tier 30 series cards are just not going to be able to run it at playable frame rates, even with DLSS super resolution. If you try to enable other ray trace modes such as just RT reflections, then the ray reconstruction option simply becomes greyed out. The second factor is that DLSS super resolution must be used in order to access ray reconstruction. As you can see here, the option for ray reconstruction doesn't even appear until you enable super resolution, and currently DLAA is not supported. Right now, if you do enable DLLA, it simply removes the ray reconstruction option completely. In other words, upscaling is required and you can't currently game with ray reconstruction at native resolution. It's also worth pointing out that in this video, I'm solely focused on ray reconstruction. So frame generation, for instance, is not enabled for any of my image quality comparisons. All game capture was done using an RTX 4090 unless otherwise stated on screen. And all capture was done at 4K 60 FPS using the Elgato 4K 60 capture card. Let's get started though, and here we have our first image comparison. I'll give you a little time to have a look at the two images side by side, and maybe the keen-eyed amongst you will already be able to spot a few differences. I do, however, think it's actually easier when switching back and forth between two images on a full screen window, and hopefully this should start highlighting some of the visual improvements. 
The first thing I noticed is that it really looks like a clarity slider has been whacked way up when enabling ray reconstruction. The light hanging from the ceiling is brighter and more defined, while the car, particularly this section on the roof here, does look sharper and more detailed. General ambient occlusion as well is improved massively, as evidenced by these cables on the ground here. With ray reconstruction, they look significantly more grounded and realistic, while reflecting more of the white glow from the internal lighting, which is also evidenced on the concrete floor. I think it's fair to say that the overall differences may not immediately jump out and slap you around the face, but they are definitely there. I did notice an issue, however, in this first scene when looking at the shadowing from underneath the car. With ray reconstruction on, the shadow is noticeably more flickery and generally unstable, and this actually gets worse as the resolution is lowered. First at 4K, but switching to the DLSS performance mode, which has an internal 1080p resolution, but also we saw this at 1440p using DLSS quality. It's hardly the end of the world, but it is an issue not present when ray reconstruction is turned off. Moving on to the next scene though, I don't think you're going to need me to point out that many changes made in this scene as they are pretty staggering. Not only is the reflection vastly more detailed and much more clear overall, but take a look at this newspaper on the ground. There is now some actual ambient occlusion applying to it, whereas with ray reconstruction off, it does kind of look like it's just floating on the screen. Further detail is also restored from the barbed wire in the background too. You can really see just how much more stable the image is with ray reconstruction turned on with next to no flickering. These improvements do also carry over at lower resolutions, including 1440p using the quality mode, and actually even 1080p DLSS quality holds up surprisingly well here and still shows a massive increase in reflection detail. That being said, I do have one issue with the image here, and this is visible at 4K, but becomes more obvious at those lower resolutions. For me, the problem is just that ray reconstruction appears to smooth things out just a bit too much. The orange pavement area, for instance, loses a lot of the grime and dirt that you can see when ray reconstruction is disabled. This also applies at 1080p resolution as well, where as much as the reflection detail is improved, the glossy surfaces take on an almost watercolor painting type look. It is a big improvement in some ways, but also appears to be a step back in terms of the lost texture detail. The good news though is that ray reconstruction generally holds up pretty well in motion. I say generally as there are a few caveats which we'll get to later, but here in this scene, even if we zoom in at 200% and slow down to 25% speed, the reflections look clear and sharp without visible issues. In fact, with ray reconstruction on, some visible shimmering is actually removed from the grey concrete floor. There are, however, some other issues I noticed in motion. Primarily, check out these bollards here in the same scene. You can see noticeable shimmering and what appears to be some sort of ghosting around the edges of each object. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying there's no ghosting when ray reconstruction is turned off, but it's definitely more visible with the feature turned on. This is also something I noticed when just watching NPCs walk around in-game. It does get slightly more obvious at lower resolutions, but does still happen even at 4K DLSS quality mode. Just check out the edges of each NPC. This is something I also observed when just sitting and watching the traffic go by. Check out these cars here as they all turn left. There's a noticeable trailing effect after each and every one of them. 100% though, ghosting is still present with ray reconstruction turned off. That really is just a DLSS super resolution thing, but I do think there is more dark trailing with ray reconstruction turned on. I am going to carry on to talk about the benefits of ray reconstruction in just a moment, but while we are picking out the flaws, I did notice that it seems to have occasional issues where fine details are obscured or in motion. I first noticed this on this Chew 2 sign here with the wires hanging underneath. You can see there's noticeable shimmering and these bright highlights surrounding each of the wires when ray reconstruction is enabled, and I specifically went back and checked, and that does still happen even when the character is staying still, even at 4K DLSS quality mode. Perhaps it's something to do with the dark volumetric smoke behind the sign. I'm not 100% sure, but it is very obvious. 
I found something similar as well, though perhaps more subtle in Night City. When looking at this fencing area and the NPCs in the background, through the steam and sparks produced from this street vendor. Now you do have to be really looking for it, but you can clearly see again those bright highlights and sparkling when ray reconstruction is turned on, which simply does not happen when ray reconstruction is turned off. The final issue I want to talk about comes down to fine lines in general, which can exhibit some breakup that just isn't as prevalent when ray reconstruction is disabled. This scene here is just me jumping up and down, looking at these wires hanging beneath a light, but you can clearly see the image is notably more aliased and generally unstable with ray reconstruction turned on. That being said, I did actually notice one example where ray reconstruction significantly improved performance in motion. Here we can see that DLSS seems to have bugged out without ray reconstruction enabled and was resulting in some absolutely awful ghosting. Simply by enabling ray reconstruction though in the exact same spot seemed to fix the issue completely, so I would say overall in motion it does appear to be a bit of a mixed bag. There are plenty of other positives we've not touched on yet though, including how ray reconstruction can help boost global illumination and general light diffusion. That's visible here in this scene when looking at those steps. The ambient lighting is significantly boosted on those steps giving the appearance that they are bathed in light, whereas with ray reconstruction turned off, the overall light flow is a bit more muted. That being said, I did notice a bit of an oddity with ray reconstruction turned on, that being that the colour changes do appear to have this cascading look to them at times, like the colours slowly spread up the steps, rather than a smooth transition as we see with ray reconstruction turned off. Looking at each piece of footage full screen reveals that when ray reconstruction is on, there does appear to be a very slight delay for the change in colours to be reflected in the ground and on the steps. I've slowed this right down here and you can see that it does take a few frames from the change in the LED colour source for this to be reflected in the scene. With ray reconstruction turned off though, it responds without any delay and without that wave-like cascading appearance. The ambient occlusion is again improved in this scene though, which is noticeable when looking almost anywhere, but particularly at those tiles on the floor. Each looks much more defined now and also take on more of the glow of that LED sign in the background. In actual fact, the improvements to ambient occlusion is, in my opinion, one of the most noticeable improvements when looking at ray reconstruction. We've already seen that a few times today and it's again particularly evident here when looking at this foliage. These trees here for instance take on much more definition and self-shadowing when switching ray reconstruction on. For a final example we can also see a similar thing from the grass on the ground but this time the primary light source is my car's headlights. Interestingly a closer look also reveals that ray reconstruction removes a lot of shimmering from the foliage while also restoring lost ground texture which had become all smeary and blurred, similar to what we saw earlier with the helicopter. So it would appear that in areas where DLSS doesn't completely reconstruct the image properly, enabling ray reconstruction can help fix up some of that smearing and ghosting. That's where I'm going to call time on the image quality comparisons. We could go on and on and on, but I think that's covered most of the bases. Now though, it's time to take a look at performance, starting with the RTX 4090 at 4K using the DLSS Performance Super Resolution option. Looking here then at performance in the Cherry Blossom market area, we can see a small improvement to frame rates with ray reconstruction turned on up from about 72 FPS to around 77 FPS, so that's reducing the frame time by about a millisecond or so. I did also test an RTX 3080, and as a reminder, this is with path tracing turned on, so frame rates are pretty low. At 4K DLSS performance, we're looking at 32 FPS with ray reconstruction turned off, and then about 33 to 34 FPS with it on, so a very small win, but nothing major. Dropping down to 1440p with the RTX 3080 and switching to DLSS quality mode does bump frame rates up to around 40 FPS and again it is a small performance increase with ray reconstruction turned on but a very slender one. Call me a madman but I also wanted to try with a 20 series GPU specifically the RTX 2070 Super. 
This was not a particularly pleasant experience, even at 1080p using the DLSS quality mode, performance is sub 30 FPS. So enabling path tracing is simply not viable on this level of hardware. That does bring me back to my final point, however, which comes back to the fact that ray reconstruction is only available in the path traced RT overdrive mode. I do find this a bit disappointing as I think if you could enable ray reconstruction with single RT effects like just RT reflections for instance, then that could still provide a big boost in image quality without completely tanking performance for the likes of the 20 series GPUs. For example, this scene here is the 2070 Super running 1440p DLSS quality mode but with only RT reflections enabled and it's not far off 50 FPS. Of course, the thing here is that we just don't know how ray reconstruction would affect performance when only replacing a single denoiser, though I did note that in NVIDIA's reviewer's guide, they do say that performance is best when ray reconstruction replaces multiple denoisers, and it could actually drop when only replacing a single denoiser, though I've not been able to test that for myself. Even with that in mind though, I simply would have loved to at least have the option to enable it with just a single RT effect, rather than being forced into using the path tracing mode, which is incredibly heavy on the GPU. With all that said and done then, that brings us to the end of our video, and generally, I have to say I am pretty impressed with what Nvidia has achieved with DLSS 3.5 ray reconstruction. As we saw multiple times across this video, enabling ray reconstruction can provide a massive improvement in image quality compared to what we'd get with more traditional denoises, and it does so while performing on par, if not slightly better than those traditional denoises. Of course, it's not all sunshine and rainbows though, as DLSS 3.5 does have some issues with flickering and shimmering depending on the environment, while I found that fine lines tended to break up in motion. Other issues are also present, such as ray reconstruction removing floor detail and texture in certain scenes, while sudden changes in local lighting aren't always reflected instantly. Some of those points though are pretty minor, and generally I think the positives far outweigh the negatives. We are already used to some DLSS issues like shimmering and ghosting, so having just a little bit more of that in exchange for some significant boost to image quality is a trade-off well worth making in my opinion. I also think it's fair to factor in that Nvidia simply has a good track record of improving its software solutions. DLSS 2 for instance was a massive leap forward compared to DLSS 1, while DLSS 3 frame generation has already seen some noticeable improvements since it's been on the market. In that sense then, I would imagine that DLSS 3.5 is only going to get better with time, but of course, we're just going to have to wait and see how that pans out. As for a couple of specific improvements, I personally would love it if you could enable ray reconstruction at native resolution in tandem with DLAA. I also would really like to see it being supported on single RT effects like RT reflections, ambient occlusion or global illumination. At the minute, having it limited to just the RT overdrive path trace renderer I think really does effectively limit how many GPUs can access this technology. Regardless of whether they are officially supported or not, path tracing is so demanding it really does limit it to just the high-end 30 series or 40 series GPUs. Ultimately, it's clear there is massive potential here and I personally am really excited to see more games coming out supporting the technology. We already know about Portal with RTX and Alan Wake 2, but hopefully more titles get announced to support DLSS 3.5 very soon. That is going to do it for this video though guys, so if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up and as always, let me know your thoughts on Ray Reconstruction down in the comments below. Please do subscribe and ding that notification bell if you haven't already, and why not come carry on the conversation with us over on our Discord server, which is linked in the description. While you're there, you can also find a link to our merch store if you want to support us by picking up a new t-shirt, and you could even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though, guys. I'm Dominic4KidGuru, and I'll see you in the next video.